Okay, here we have this first day of April. We um we get ready to almost end this this Romans, the Roman what called the Roman road. But before we get started, because we're dealing with a powerful topic again, I like all the topics that Paul did in Rome were powerful. But we're talking about judging. You know, we got these disputable things even today. We got more of them. Uh, and we're going to explain some things as we go along, even though I'm just required by, you know, my, my, my assignment is to read the word. And a lot of us don't read it. So we need to read so we understand it. And then we got, you know, the Holy Spirit and, and he convicts you of your conscience. He tries to get you to um, to follow his word. He, he gets conviction. So some of us get convicted over something. Some of us don't. And some of us have to harden our hearts so we, you know, it makes that conviction, that 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 tap, that Holy Spirit uh, trying to hear the Holy Spirit, uh, which it takes years, sometimes years to try to develop in practice because he, you know, he, he's trying to talk to you, he's trying to tell you what's right and wrong. And um, but um, we let let us let let us go through a word of prayer and then we're gonna start up. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. We thank you. We surrender all once again uh, to you this Saturday. We, we go on chapter 14. Uh, we're dealing with judging your brothers in Christian liberty. And then we you, you, you say some powerful things and you end up saying some powerful things through the Apostle Paul. And we thank you for them. So um, give us ears to hear and eyes to see, you know, uh, Hopefully, you know, our heart is not hardened to what you're trying to tell us. And we give you all the praise because we love you. And, and that's the that's the key to this whole developing ourselves to do what you asked us to do in the earth. And uh, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus name. Amen. I tell you, we well, this this is. Uh, you know, we, we I get at least I do. I don't know about other brothers and sisters in the faith. We get into disputes, disputable things uh, that that have nothing to do with our salvation, and we may, and then we make a doctrine out of it. And that's when we have to we, we get back into the word and try to explain that that's not true. And um, I like I say, let, let us. What we're gonna to try to do is is let's share our screen. Let's start this this, this reading and, and and get Darnell out of this thing and let let God be God. Okay, so let let's start with uh, uh we shared our screen. Now we start like we always start even from way back. If you go back to YouTube, we start Genesis and we always start in the beginning God and when. Once we, we start there, you know, you, you, you can't, you, I can't say you is, some people can't go wrong. If you really have a heart to understand who your God is, who your father, uh, if you really want to know God, if you want to know your father, just like you know your earthly father or you know your, your friend, your, 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 your wife, your, your, your husband, you will, you, 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 will, you will do something about it. Okay, in the beginning, God, we see, and then he say, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In other words, God is his word. And that's what I was trying to tell the brother the other week, last week. God is his word. You know, we, we had a dispute. I said, hey, let's go back to the word. Look what did the word say? And uh, I don't, I'm not dogmatic and go beat you over the head with the word. I just say, you know, when we get into those areas of uh, that's not disputable, but these are disputable. Um, you know, this, this Paul talks about in this chapter, he talked about some of the disputable things that we we argue over and, and it divides us. But we when we look at this, he said, Epistle of Paul to the Romans of God. This is this is about the epistle of Paul to the Romans of God's blessings and purpose. This is what this book of Rome is about. This book, this epistle is about. It, it, he said, from Paul, a bond servant of Jesus Christ, a servant, he said, a servant of Jesus Christ, servant of Jesus Christ. I, I mentioned that twice. Servant of Jesus. We are servants of Jesus Christ. We're not only sons and daughters. We're servants of Jesus Christ. I don't care where you are, what where, where leadership or whether part you play in, in, in the uh, fellowships and in the churches, 
because we are the church. Um, we are the body of Christ and uh, we are servants. Okay, and that's Roman 1.1. 1, 1. And then it goes the epistle or, or the book of uh, Rome's purpose is to educate, to help. Okay, <laughs> educate and help the believers. One deal, the first few chapters we went over is talking about chapters one through eight, talking about the basic doctrine and then to help the believers versus the unbelief of the Jews show how the Gentiles benefited from it. That was chapters nine and 11. Now we're on chapter 14. We in the middle, we go to chapter 16. So next week it'll be 15. And, and before April, we'll be through and then we'll be in the book of Galatians. And we, cause I, that's where I'm going. I was going to go to Matthew, the Lord that persuaded me to go to, uh, to Galatians. You know, now and, and to read that because that's where he really whispered into my, he really talked openly. The Holy Spirit talked openly through me, to me, and through me in that that book. So this is where I explain to the believers the general principles of Christian life that God wants us to be aware and practice. That's where we are now. So we're going to go down here to maturity focus. This is what. Uh, we got on the screen. The maturity focus is to promote the obedience of faith. Promote maturity. When you mature in the faith, you promote the obedience to the faith. We're not children of disobedience. And it makes disciples. Okay. Maturity for we make disciples for Jesus' sake among all the nations. Okay. So chapter 13, I put, we put a question up here. Why do you why do we judge our brothers? Our brother, okay, and I, you got the family here. You got the got the got the, the the grandma, grandfather. We holding the baby, and then we got the 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 parents holding the baby, okay. And all of them, you know, one sleep, one when she's holding her when she sleep. The other one, she got that little smirk on her face, and one she's just laughing. The baby just laughing. That's what I like about this, you know, watching them and taking pictures while they grow. Okay, now we go to this one right. The weak in the faith. This is this is what we're gonna try to cover. What's what what it is? What is weak in the faith means? Uh, you know, I'm gonna try to get a kind of a definition that uh, I heard and I put some twists to it too. Uh, and then and uh, Christian faith, you know, Christian liberty. You know, and whatsoever is not of faith is sin. We're going to get into, we're going to talk about that for a second afterwards, you know. But let's, let's start by saying this thing, again. as Paul, let's, let's say, I'm reading the Amplified Version of chapter 14 of Romans. As for the man that's weak in faith, weak, a weak believer, and that's what I said, weak in the faith, weak believer. What, what is a weak believer? Weak, weak in faith and weak believer is one, we dealing with this uh, dispute. One who is, has convinced, he has conviction over a matter of misdirected or non-salvational related importance. In other words, uh, he, he, it plays no difference in your salvation. So we argue over that. And then, so we'll get, we'll, we'll get more into that once we read this whole chapter through. And Paul discusses some of them, but we got some today. We're talking about women preachers or women in church, or should be women do this, or should men do this? Uh, you know, some of the things we talk about, you know, should women be bishops? Uh, should, or should, you know, what about a short skirt? Or should women wear pants? You know, is that a modest dress? These are non-salvational issues. Or whether a person should be circumcised back in the day, they talked about, they argued about that. But Paul is using some of the other things about eating meat, whether you eat meat or whether you're vegetarian and all that other stuff, or you eat meat to idols. And he, he gets into, in his day, that's what they were arguing about. And uh, and they, they were saying, well, you're not saved. Or do you, if he's speaking in tongues, you know, do that make you save or not say, you know, say, well, uh, you know, you don't speak in tongues, you're not saved. You really don't have the Holy Spirit. What kind of nonsense? We, we do that. We do that. And we will use scriptures to back us up. So these are the disputable. I have nothing to do with your salvation uh, at this point in time, you know, but, uh, you know, we don't. But then some of the other issues we have to really address about adultery, immorality, and all these other things that we do. Then we get into the word and we address those. But so we saw that we already defined 
to, for a, he said, as for a man or woman that's weak, as a weak believer, welcome him into your fellowship, but not to criticize his opinion or pass judgment, okay, pass judgment on his scruples or perplex him in with discussions, okay? One man's faith permits him to believe he may eat anything, okay? I can eat anything. It ain't got nothing to do with my faith. I can eat crabs, I can eat beef, I can eat whatever. But some people, you know, will say, yeah, you shouldn't eat meat. Oh, well, good. Thank you for Jesus. But I won't, I won't eat. If that's his, his, if he's weak in the faith, I would not eat that in front of him because it might cause him to stomach. While a weaker one limits his eating to vegetables. Not to say vegetarians, or they ain't got nothing, they ain't talking about vegetarians. Some of them, they, they might do it for um, medicinal, you know, they may do it because for the health reasons. So or they may do it because they want to do it, you know. So, but don't say everybody, you know. Uh, let not him who eats look down on one and down on or despise. Okay, look down on or despise him that esteems. And let not him esteems, criticize, and pass judgment on him that eats. And that's what we we do. We, you know, you know, and we don't talk about that. For the God has accepted and welcomed him. Okay, that's what we say. It's all about God. Who are you to pass judgment? Okay, they, that's what they, Paul starts. He started going and say, "Who you, you, the Holy Spirit, Spirit is really speaking through Paul?" Or senses another household servant. See, I'm not a servant of you. I'm your brother. I serve, but I'm not your servant. It is before his own master that he stands and falls. So Paul uses those words because he's trying to break his thing down, and he shall. Here you go. The word "shall" that's a that's a legal term. He shall stand. And be upheld by the master, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, he is mightier to, you know, the Lord Jesus is mighty to support him and make him stand. Okay. That's who's his master. The master is the Lord Jesus. And he is mighty and to support and make him stand. One man esteems one day, another, another. You got seven day Adventists, you know, Christians dogmatic and say you gotta you know you gotta worship on this day while another man esteems all days to be like uh, like sacred let everyone be fully convinced satisfied in his own mind so you know paul went to the sabbath and then he deal with deal with on, on the first day of the week he went into the synagogue and now he went into uh churches and and, and preach and teach he didn't he didn't he he didn't despise either or you know he who observes on one, one day observes it to honor the Lord. See, 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 this is what he's trying to, he's not giving you a reason. He's not going, he's not saying one or the other. He just gives reason. He say, you yeah, okay. He who observes one day, the day, and observes it in honor of the Lord, he also eats and, and he also eats. And the context is those disputable matters. Okay. Context is key. Context, context, context is key. He who eats, he eats in honor of the Lord, since he, give, he gives thanks to God, while who abstains, abstain in the honor of the Lord, and gives thanks to God. See? None of us lives to himself, but to the Lord, Jesus. And none of us die to himself. No, live, he go live. Okay, lives, and none of us died to himself, but to the Lord Jesus. He's talking Christians here. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, okay, we die to the Lord Jesus. So then, Okay, now we, we got that matter class. So then, whether we live or die, we die to the Lord Jesus. Okay, for Christ Jesus died and he lived, lived again for this very purpose. Okay, 
that he might be Lord of all, both the living and the dead. Okay. We got to get that. We got to get this point. Let, let, let's do it in. For Christ I died. Okay. He died. For Christ Jesus died and lived again for every for this very purpose that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Wow. So why do we criticize and pass judgments on your brother? Hmm. Or why? Well, get a guy ask me, say, no, I say, no, you do, you do, you do, you boo. I always tell me, you do, you boo. Whatever your conscience, you think your conscience is telling you that, but don't, but don't say God doing it. If, if you're doing something that's not of God, don't say God doing it. You know, especially if you're an elder in the church and you go to Bible study, you're a missionary in the church, and you see, I'm dealing with, I'm dealing with not only the weak saying, I deal with those who more say they're more mature because you shouldn't be in ministry unless you're a little bit more mature. Than, than those who are weak brothers. He's dealing with the weak faith. With you, with weak faith, why are you in why are you in the ministry? Okay. <laughs> then you deal with people accordingly. I became I, I become all things to all men. But you know, we I, I, you know we we can have those discussions, but we we talk in those areas of immorality and talking about these areas that we, you know, you can't claim you're weak, you're in the ministry. If you are weak in the faith in the ministry, then you're in trouble. Then the, the ministry is in trouble. Okay? So why do you criticize or pass judgment on your brother? Okay? You, 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 you know, don't pass judgment on Leave him alone. Especially those weak in the faith. Or why do you look down or despise your brother? I don't like him because they, I don't like her because she wears a hat. She wears pants. I don't know if she thinks she's that in a bag of chips. No, I don't get into that. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat. There we go, of Christ. See, we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We ain't going to stand before the white throne. We did Revelation. Read my Revelation. That white throne judge. We won't. We'd be standing before that. Okay, we'd be standing before him. For reward. Okay. For it's written, as I live, say the Lord, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess to God, acknowledging him and honoring him to his praise. Okay? And so we, each of us, shall give an account. Okay? That's what I said. You, 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 you don't give an account. Of himself. Give an answer in reference to the judge, to Jesus Christ. I'm not going to get my, uh, it ain't about you. It ain't about you, brother and sister. It's about Christ. It's about God. He be crucified. So Paul is setting, setting, setting the tone. Now he's going to get into some other things. He's going to get into some, he's going to get into some. He said, let us not criticize. He said, let us know no more criticize. Don't, don't criticize. Blame. Pass judgment on one another. But rather decide on you. We talk about the context is key, disputable matters. Those areas that don't have anything to do with your salvation. He said, don't, don't pass judgment on these folks. Don't say you, you don't speak in tongues, you're going to hell. That's not true. Okay. You know, you know, you don't say today, uh, if you're not baptized and merged in the water, you're not, you know. If you're not baptized in the water, you're going to hell. These these are disputable matters. We can tell you we should baptize. That's a that's a that's a that's a, that's an ordinance saying, hey, you know, we, we get. He said, be baptized. Jesus even said, baptize. You know, but whether we sprinkle or you did some sprinkle, some whatever, that don't make you saved or unsaved. You can be a you can be a dry devil going down into the water and come up a wet devil. You know, come on. It ain't got nothing to do with a lot of the stuff that we do. He said, then let us, I, matter of fact, I'll baptize twice. I'll baptize, and I'll merge twice. <laughs> one in the apostolic faith and one in the Baptist faith. So I ain't getting baptized no more. 
I, I think that's much that, that's as much water as I'm gonna get. I'm already I'm baptized in the spirit too. So I I don't I I do all I'm all three. I'm covered. <laughs> so don't pass judgment. I'm not passing judgment on these folk and one another. But rather decide endure never to put a stumbling block or an obstacle or hindrance in front of your brother and sister. Don't do that. Because some of you know, those are the weak and the fake. Don't do that. You know. I speak to those who we, you know, they, they, even homosexuality and all of that stuff. Then we get into the immorality and and and, and all of that stuff. So we, first of all, you got to catch the fish. Okay. Don't hinder them from speaking. See, hearing the word. Don't do that. Don't call them out of his name. You know, don't, 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 don't. Show, let your light shine. Let them ask the question. They always say, well, you don't act like that. They, I, what you mean? I always ask, what, what do you mean? Yeah, I'm just like, but I'm not as dogmatic. I'm not, I, I'm ready for you. I got to catch you first. And then we sit down and have some of the, the difficult questions that you have in your mind. Why the whys? I can answer those, but I don't want to overload you right now. I know and I'm convinced and persuaded as one in Lord Jesus that nothing is forbidden, especially unclean, defiled, or unholy in itself. He's talking about in context. 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 People read that and say, whoa, you nothing. Man. I can, I can, I can shake it. <laughs> yeah. But you got always, he said nothing. He, he said he's convinced nothing is forbidden. Because he's talking about, remember the subject. He's talking about to me. He's going to the other subject when he said, you know. <laughs> so you got you got to put context is always key. Don't don't never read this out of context. But okay, because it means say, well, David had five wives, and he had six, and God knew that. But that was David. And he had to teach David a lesson. You know, God is the one. David loved God too, that you don't love. David loved his God. If God said do something, he'll do it. He was obedient. David was obedient. Something that we and then David said, "I've sinned against you only, you and you only, Lord." When he when he got convicted, when the whole when the, when Nathaniel convicted him of dealing with Bathsheba, that's why David was a man. And then he got punished for it. God whooped his butt in His way. Whom I love, I chasten. I'm not mocked. But none of this, nonetheless, it is unclean, defiled, and unholy to anyone who thinks, as a man thinketh, it is unclean. As a man thinketh, so is he. Okay? That's the way your conscience come in. But if, 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 if your brother being pain or feeling hurt, or if he's being injured, uh, by what you eat, then you are no longer walking in love. That's the key. Love, love covers. Man, you, you, he said, it's faith, hope, and love. Love, love is the driving force of, on all that we do as uh, practical Christians. Now we're into the practical war Christianity. You have ceased to be living and conducting yourself in the standard of love toward him. That's what I back up. I always tell people, we good? We good? I, I, want, I still love you. I'm going to love the hell out of you. That's what I do, boo. I'm going to love the hell out of you. I let God be God. The Holy Spirit convict you. Cause I got my own. I got working out my own salvation. <laughs> I know this. This flesh is tough. That's why we're getting into uh, Galatians. A lot of folk are fall falling because of this this flesh. Flesh yourself by standards of love. Look at that. You you have ceased. To live, to be living and conducting, living and conducting, that means practicing walking yourself in the standard of love. What is standard of love? Okay, 1 Corinthians 13. Read it. 
and meditate on, and let's discuss it. We can get into that too. Okay? Do not let you eat and let what you eat, and context is key, hurt and cause the ruin of one for whom Christ died. Glory. Mm. Do not let Okay, do not let you eat, hurt, or cause the ruin of the one who Christ died for. Do not, therefore, let it seem, well, let what seems good to you be considered evil. Okay? That's what he's saying. By someone else. And that's what I, I always tell people. I got to be careful. Okay. I got to be very careful. And I pray, I hope I didn't cause anybody to stone over my lifetime. But I, you know, I, I was born again, really, at the age of 36. So I'm a mature, I'm a mature saint because God, God, God himself, when my, it's not that, he he knew I was he when he saved me I I started running and I yeah there was some stumbling blocks out there I I got thrown I got thrown out of these one church too you know by zeal okay that happened but we had God sent a brother and a sister to to help me to understand what had happened. Because I came across some evil folk. In other words, they didn't they didn't understand my uh, my my uh, babiness. You know, you get that when you first say you're born again, you you start running. Even the baby you have to be cradled and get milk and then gotta gotta start learning how to walk. And then potty train and then learn how to you know speak and potty train and then you did, and then they thought, you know, you want, you want to be walking, and then yes, it's this progression. It's not something that happens overnight. You have to walk in this thing, and, and as you constantly meditate on the word, you get more. You go and get more light, you know, until it become a full blaze. In other words, do not give occasion for for others to criticize that which is justifiable for you. Okay. After all, the kingdom of God. Here we go. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of Christ, is not a matter of getting food or drink. One likes, but instead it is righteousness, the state in which makes one person acceptable to God. Abraham was counted as righteous when he believed, okay? It makes you acceptable to God in his heart, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You're gonna have joy in him. Not pain in him. Let me do this again. After all, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Jesus, the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, all is the same. Okay? It makes a person acceptable to God. Righteousness makes a person acceptable to God. It's heart peace. Oh, I got peace. Okay, good. God bless you. Enjoy the Holy Ghost. He who serves Christ in this way is acceptable. And pleasing to God. And is approved by man. He who serves Christ in this way is acceptable and pleasing to God. And is approved by man. 
I, I used to do this. I said, when God, when your ways please God, he will make that knucklehead man. He will make, he will make folk at peace with you. Okay. So let us then definitely aim and uh, for and be eagerly pursue and make for harmony and mutual upbuilding, edifying and developing one another. This is what we do. This is what we do. That's the aim. That's the purpose of this, of what we do is practical living every day to day. Pursue makes for harmony, for mutual upbuilding, edifying, uh, developing uh, one another. Get them to where you are, where you think you are. Hopefully, if you if you sitting here disputing over this nonsense, then you know you over 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 uh, meat and drinking, and, and and whether you you go to church on Saturday or Sunday, and all this other uh, uh, non salvational stuff, or where you wear short dresses, or where they're bishops, or whether you speak in tongues to be saved, then you not you're not mature. You're not edifying no one. Oh, you wear this dress. Or this collar. Okay. You must not. For the forsake of food. Undo. And break down and destroy what God. What the works of God. The works of God. Or talk about wine. It's okay to drink wine. It's okay to drink wine. I don't drink it. I used to. You know, my brother, he told Timothy, take a little wine for the belly. It's for municipal purposes. Something like take a drink for wine for their food. But we sit up here and smoke marijuana for medicinal purposes. Or we sit up here and drink, a, uh, we do other things. Okay. Stop the med Take medicine and things, uh, narcotics. Come on. Everything is indeed ceremonially, ceremonially. Talking about food, clean and pure. But we're talking about context is key. It is wrong for anybody, anyone to hurt the conscience of another. Or make them fall. And that's why I got to always say, make them fall by somebody's knee. Okay? Eat. Come on. What flesh you eat? Okay? Come on. Conscience. You got to, let me just underline this thing and make it red. God gives us a conscience because that's how he deals with us. He convicts us. Holy Spirit convicts us. The right thing is to eat. Okay. The right thing is to eat. It, the right thing is to eat no meat or drink no wine at all or do anything. Look, we, we'll stop there. That's what we do. We stop there. Oh, Paul said it's, it's no, it's not not a right thing to, to to eat no meat and drink no wine. Out of context, we didn't go on. if it makes your brother stumble or hurt his conscience and weaken him. We didn't go to that. We 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 stopped the if we stopped at the if we stopped before we got to the if. And then whatever version you read, you'll stop. Is that right? B, you know, go to B. No, I want to go to B and C. I want to read the whole sentence. If it makes your brother stumble or hurt his conscience, there we go again, that conscience. Okay? Or Finn. 
okay? Or we get him or her. And this is just not for food. Man. There's other things too. That's why I try to say, okay, I think you are we good? No, you made me. I'm telling you, okay, I'm sorry. Stop. I apologize. Your personal conviction. That's what it is. Your personal conviction on such matters exercise as in Christ Jesus' presence, okay? He said, you're probably keeping them to yourself, striving only to know, this is what we do, we're striving only to know and obey Christ's will. What is the, what is the will of God? Striving only to know the truth what is the truth? Uh-huh. What's the truth? I'll go over here and back. What's the truth? Put the truth there. What is the truth? And obey. His will. Not my will, but thy will be done. That's the hardest part. That's what he's getting you on to. That's what all your struggles are about. He's getting you to understand this. Understand, 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 understand. He's getting us to understand that peace, okay? Bless, happy to be envious is. That's why people tell, uh, he said, miserable. He said, bless, happy to be in envy. He who has no reason to judge himself for what he approves who does not convict himself by what he chooses to do. Oh, you chose to eat that meat. Oh, okay, buddy. It's good, too. Okay? But he chooses. He, 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 you know, he, he's blessed, happy, because okay? he, he said, who, who who does not convict himself? And, you know, hey, just for a piece of meat. We talking about meat. We talking about go go to that seventh day that said the Sabbath Sunday at church. Or go to uh, church on Sundays. Or if he, they don't speak in tongues. Okay? Or if they don't, or not bishops. But the man who has doubt, there you go. Misgivings or uneasy because of conscience sake about eating, then eat, and then eat perhaps because of you, stands condemned before God because he is not true to his convictions. He does not act from faith. I'm doing it because, you know, you convicted because of you. No, don't do that. You can't do what I do. But I'll make sure if it's uncomfortable for you, I won't do it around you. Because it's not true to his convictions. He does not act from faith. Mm. We're going to get into what faith is. For whatever does not originate and proceeds from faith is sin. Let me read that again. For whatever does not originate and proceed from faith is sin. It's missing the mark, in other words. Sin is missing the mark. Whatever is done without a conviction or of, a, of a, its approval by God, or Jesus, the Holy Spirit, is sinful. Mm. 
Hmm. That's a powerful statement. For whatever is done without a conviction of its approval. We're talking in the context here. And approval of God's, uh, of Jesus, is simple. You know what it is. When you got convicted, it was in the Holy Ghost is convicting you. That's why you got a conscience. If your conscience is clear, that's what Paul talks about in, in Timothy, talking about seer conscience. So you think everything is okay. We're not getting into morality right now. We're going to get into those things in, in Galatians because he talks about it. And, and then you just, okay. You know, you drown out. You make yourself hard. You got a hard heart. Like the Pharisees had a heart. You kept using the hardness of your heart. When David, when Nathan came to David, David was convicted. He repented. What should I do? Then, because most kings, some of them kings are kings. Okay. I know when I'm doing something wrong. I'm mature enough to know. I know it's wrong. But he deals with me harder. And he would deal with somebody that's he talking about food. I ain't done. You sit in front of me, if it's not that I'd like it, I'm eating. In this context. We got a lot of stuff, got a lot of nonsense out of there. So let me let me stop must stop sharing. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this brilliant, this brilliant piece of uh, walking in the faith, walking in love. Let your will be done. That's the bottom line. Faith. The substance of what we hope for. And the evidence of things not seen. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for your faith. He said, without even faith, you can't even, you can't, we can't even please you. We, 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 we're done without faith. Faith is one is in the top three. Faith, hope, and love. But without love, you know, you, you, you're nothing. Without love, we're nothing. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your word once again on this Saturday, the 1st of April, 2023. We, 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 <laughs> If nobody else get nothing out of this, I am. I thank you. You told me to go through, read it, maybe. And I think it was mostly for me because you have done a great work in your son. And I give you all the praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. I tell you, I mean, we can we can go on and on and on and on. We talked about the weak faith. It's the conviction. You know, here, here we talk about one who's casting convictions over matters that's misdirected or non-salvational related importance. It play, it you know, it plays it plays no different than salvation. And Paul talked, he used a few examples. He talked about it. he talked about some food, he talked about Sabbath holding, he, you know, and that was in his day. Now we got a, a bunch of stuff. You know, you can't even we're not supposed to vote. And, uh, some people were. Uh, Got carriages. They don't talk about like they don't want electricity in their house. I say we we it, 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 it. that's the key. That's the key. And there's some of those though. You should go to Acts ten fifteen. They were disputing this stuff in Paul. They were talking about circumcision. They said if you know, that's why we're going to Galatians now because he's talking. About, if you don't have sir. You're not circumcised. You you're not saved. If you don't speak in tongue, you're not saved. Okay. Those questions was answered. And they say, don't let your good, good, good be evil spoken of. Don't hurt your brother. And we talk about those salvational issues. You know, 
They are no longer, when, when we, we get to non-salvational issues, when we get to those salvational issues, those immorality questions, then we have to, we go to the word. We don't use our opinions. We go to the word. The word, let the, the word convict, not you and your opinion. Okay? You must address it with the word. Okay? Those are those issues that we are discussing today. That's why we, we, we almost this country is almost being torn down because of those issues. people are killing each other because of those issues. Uh, listening to God is a developed ability. I want to get. I want to make sure that's clear to those out there. It's developed. It's a developed ability, and it is over time because you have to acquire the ear to hear. So I listen. Christian liberty, walking in love. Love is the love is the driving force of all we do. If you think it's not, go to 1 Corinthians 13. You think not, it's the driving issue. Love, but it's unconditional love. It's not the love, it's not this human love that you talk about. It's uncut, it's God's love. Okay. But anything that costs your brother's stomach, leave it alone. He'd get there, just like you got there. When I remember when I first got saved when I was 36 years old, boy, I stumbled a lot. And I got I got some stuff. People jumped on me. So, I, you know, you get wisdom over. God gives you wisdom over the years as you listen to him. Tell me, he said, you don't sound like this little brother. He said, all right. Well, you ain't got nothing to do with that. Let's, let's have a conversation. I'd rather still have a conversation with you. I don't want you to, to go away misunderstanding okay so that's how we wrapping it up i love it i love this stuff so god bless you i got a little my little grand grandmother and then they got the grandmother and then the grand she's sitting there listening not understanding right now but she's listening ha ah. Ooh, that's important. Just listen. Just sit back and listen. Okay. You get it. You get it. That's where that piece coming. I say, yeah, yeah, look at it. Look, 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 look at it. Look at it. God is good. So, well, hope you learn something. I am. Nobody else learned something. I'm learning. I'm going through this. God is doing a great job. The Holy Spirit is doing a great job in breaking this stuff down to me. And I'm getting away from those fleshy matters. Thank God that I, I, I pass, uh, keep passing tests. And give, give me peace among the folk that I'm around. God is good. Okay. So God bless you, God keep you, God cause his face to shine on you. And I will see you in chapter 15. We got chapter 15 and then chapter 16 to go. We did a great, this is a great, this is a great teaching, great teaching from, from God's perspective. So until next time, you have fun this rainy, at least in Maryland, this rainy, windy Saturday. Uh, and I, God bless you. See you next week.